as an NFL referee, I always say I can't hide. So I can't go out there on Sunday and hope that nobody sees my calls. There's like, you know, 70,000 people in the stands, 7 million watching on TV and a billion others on Twitter commenting on everything. So I'm a super high accountability human. And this is to me, the root cause of sales purgatory is that people allow it to happen. They're the answer. Everyone wants to go external and blame, well, customers don't get back to me or they don't do this or they won't commit or their buying process is jacked up or whatever. It, the, the main cause is that you allow this to continue and not in a mean, bad way. You, people just haven't decided I'm not going to play sales purgatory anymore. When that light switch goes off in your head, you go, hmm, you know what? I'm done. No more sales purgatory for me. I'm Devin Reed. And I'm Sheena Badani. And you're watching Reveal, the revenue intelligence podcast powered by Gong. Keep watching here to see the full interview. Or if you like to listen to podcasts on the go, check out the links in the description below. And if you like what you hear, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, or all of them. Why not? And while you're there, make sure to leave us a five-star review. We personally read every single one, and I think I speak for both of us when I say they mean the world to us. Could not agree more, Devin. Now, without further ado, here's the episode you've been waiting for. So, Brian, it is common for salespeople to also be sports fanatics. <laughs> yes. It is very rare that a salesperson is actually in sports. And Agreed. you are a professional NFL referee, which tells me that you just love being berated because salespeople deal with <laughs> constant rejection and referees are constantly being yelled at. So what, uh, wh why did you pick this career path? Yeah. So thanks, Devin. And uh, first, I'm really glad to be here. And uh, I didn't know this was a therapy session. So doctor, <laughs> uh, there's clearly something in my, uh, yeah, my psychological makeup from being a kid that loves either lots of pressure or loves to be critiqued or criticized or whatever. Um, I, I'm telling you, I love my jobs so much. I love selling. I love sales coaching. And I love ref and football, as weird as that sounds. My little phrase is, uh, and I tell this to my sales clients, when they're yelling and they're really mad at me, I say they're yelling at my shirt. They're not yelling at me. I'm still protected on the inside. I'm good. <laughs> have but you, it's great. Have you ever refereed a Raiders game in the last 10 years? I have. <laughs> okay, so I can just blame you for how terrible we've been. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm sure at some point, if you watch the film, you would find me contributing to the demise of almost every NFL team at some point. Some, some mistake that I made, guaranteed. The yes, Raiders, I didn't know you were a Raiders guy, Devin. I didn't know that. I, uh, dwindling since they've moved, and I, I'm yeah. not loving how they've handled it, but I am a Raiders fan, <laughs> uh, especially All talking right. to you. I got to rep a football team. But uh, I know that multiple seasons they hold the record for the most uh, penalties in a single season. <laughs> and I just like knowing that I'm meeting the person who threw one of them on the field. So that, uh, I've, yep, I'm sure I've thrown many on the field there. And I will... Uh, yeah, if I ever uh, pull them up on the schedule, then I'll, I'll give you a shout. That'd be lovely. Let you know. And then you can bitch by name. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So uh, we, we've covered uh, one of your jobs, NFL. Yeah. The other one is you're the founder of Blind Zebra. So folks who might not know what that is, would you mind breaking that down for us and what you guys focus on? Yeah, I would love to. So we've been um, in the current mode of Blind Zebra for the past eight years, uh, doing sales training and sales coaching for B2B sales teams. We have traditionally been a high touch, um, uh, high integrated uh, sales coaching group. So we keep a small number of clients on purpose, go really deep, almost like we work there and really partner with their VP of sales, CRO, CEO to implement sales strategy, uh, 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 process, thinking, action, all this stuff. Uh, COVID is actually, and I sometimes I hate saying this just because a lot of people have suffered a lot. It's been the best thing that happened to our business because salespeople have learned and I know a lot of us wish we hadn't learned to do all of our meetings on zoom. So now blind zebra is, you know, an international group that can serve sales clients and do coaching anywhere in the world. And we, that's what we've been that's doing. Amazing. So, and overall I've been doing sales coaching for 23 years. So you do the math on that old guy <laughs> part of the deal. There's no math on this show. We have data <laughs> breakouts. We talk about stats, but sales podcasts. Of course no there's no math. there is data though. So <laughs> yeah, yes, there is. <laughs> I let other people tell, do the math and then bring the data and I'll just read the, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Um, very cool. Well, the topic we wanted to talk about with you, Brian, is eliminating sales purgatory, which is something that you shared when we first met. Can you just open up the conversation with what is sales purgatory to you? 
Absolutely. Yeah. And this is, this has been a new, it's, it's one, a topic that's always been around for all of us. And I never knew what to call it. And like most ideas to me, the ones that are the best ones are the ones that just sort of pop out of your mouth one day. And I was in a coaching class and I said, you know, this is crazy that, that we, we've got to get out of the sales purgatory. It just sort of came out. And I thought, man, this is interesting. Sales purgatory to me is our biggest enemy in, in selling. We, we, it's not competition. It's not some of the other things we tend to label as our, as a, a, our enemy. It's the stat, the, the, the status quo in the middle where nothing is moving. And so strict definition for me, if you take your, uh, any CRM that you use and you look at your open opportunities, any deal that isn't uh, close one, close lost, that does not have a next step clearly defined, accepted on a calendar is in sales purgatory. So if we're waiting on something, if uh, we're intending to get back to somebody, if we're supposed to call them later, that to me qualifies as sales purgatory. What about deals that are just like in a stage and you're kind of like going through this loop of, you know, pulling in new folks and it's, you're just like stuck in a stage for like many, many months. What about that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Sheena. So um, the, the kind of a du dual sided answer, it, I'm cool personally, and uh, this is all opinion too. So other people can have sure. angles on this. Um, if we're in that loop and we feel like the loop is progressing and the dates are calendared, I'm cool with this being there. There does come a time, and I wish, and this is why I love Gong so much, you will bring science to this. I bring uh, gut feel. There's a time at a point where you go, we're, this isn't going anywhere, just right. what you're saying. Like, we've been in this stage two, this discovery phase, just too long. I would say we've just been here too long. Gong will tell us with data, here's how you know you've been mm -hmm. here too long, you know, which I love about what you all do. Um, so those then become selected choice, even if someone agrees to another meeting. There does come a time and place where you say, you know, she, it feels like we've been spending this for a while. Let's take a break. Let's you put it on the shelf. I'll put it on the shelf. Let's just like mm, go away, mm -hmm. breathe, take a little break from each other. Kind of like a mutual separation. See how it feels. And let's try to reconnect later and see if anything changes relative to momentum and our energy and all that other stuff. So what's the root cause? Like, why do deals get in purgatory mm -hmm. in the first place? Yes. So um, so this is I'm a. a as an NFL referee, I always say I can't hide. So I can't go out there on Sunday and hope that nobody sees my calls. There's like, you know, 70,000 people in the stands, 7 million watching on TV and a billion others on Twitter commenting on everything. So I'm a super high accountability human. And this is to me, the root cause of sales purgatory is that people allow it to happen. They're the answer. Everyone wants to go external and blame, well, customers don't get back to me or they don't do this or they won't commit or their buying process is jacked up or whatever. It, the, the main cause is that you allow this to continue and not in a mean, bad way. You, people just haven't decided I'm not going to play sales purgatory anymore. When that light switch goes off in your head, you go, hmm, hopefully people listen to this and they go, you know what? I'm done. No more sales purgatory for me. Then I can teach people specific tools on how to you know, avoid it or fix it when you're in there. But that's the root cause is the decision to not play the game as the salesperson. We don't play sales purgatory. This is not what we do. Not in a cocky way, not in a controlling way. It's just to me, it's not efficient for anybody. I don't think it's efficient for buyers. I don't think it's a really good experience for people. When I'm in that loop, you talked about Sheena, like, eh, I don't think that feels good to anybody. So I love this idea of a, a concise, efficient process, very, very clear on every step, very clear on every calendar invite, moving to a decision, a yes or a no, carry on. That's what I love. To me, getting out of purgatory would mean progressing the deal or pulling the cord. Totally. Totally. And I, and I think when you're saying is like, kind of like your example, Sheena's like, you know, you're, you're kind of running in a loop or you're like, you know, treading water, right? Not really going anywhere, but you sure are putting in a lot of effort and time. I think, speaking from experience and having known a lot of other sellers is, yeah, you don't want to walk away from pipeline like it, but there, yeah. there's, you know, you're telling me there's a chance maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what is your advice, Brian, for like, I don't know if it's when to walk away or if there's a signal of like, you know, is it right away when you're treading water, be aware, or is it tread water yeah. for a certain amount of time? You, you, you see where I'm trying to get to here's like, yeah, when, totally. when do you just walk away? I guess is the yes. easy way to put it. It's a really great question. Um, and I have, so, um, I love technology. I love data. I love what Gong does. I love anyone that does anything that can help me with data. And I use a whiteboard to teach with. Ta -da. 
See, I just put my whiteboard in front of the screen if you're listening to this. So I wrote a word on here that is part of the root cause, which is a lack of this. That says detachment. Detachment. Um, I feel that the, the first step to this is examining our energy around our sales funnel and asking ourselves, do I have a healthy sense of detachment with the deals that are in my open funnel at this point? And that can, uh, our results can, can make that oscillate good and bad. We become more attached when we are behind on our quarterly number or monthly number, it's just like human nature. Right. And so I always point people to that first is I say, well, I've got to look at this and go, hang on, I've got to get my energy square first. Let me get in a state of healthy detachment. Then I'm more comfortable with things coming and going. Then tactically what we do is we roll through people through a process. We have a, I have a, a tool called stall continuum. And I work people through a four-stage stall continuum. So um, you and I have a process going on. We have a meeting set. You say, hey, Brian, something came up, man. Sorry, I can't make the meeting. Let's reschedule. I go, no problem. That's stall number one. Whether you did it intentionally or not, now I'm in the stall continuum. Now my ears are open. That's I'm interesting. Going, okay, Devin blew me off. Not, you know, maybe you just reschedule real quick and we're back into it. Now we're out of the stall continuum. Maybe you don't, though. Maybe we ping pong back and forth. No date. Maybe you push off. Maybe you do it second time. Now I'm in second stall. And each time we move up the stall continuum, um, our language and our action needs to move a little bit, needs to change. What most people get stuck doing with purgatory deals is the same message and the same modality with communication. I keep emailing you and saying the same thing, for it, right? And it's like, checking in. Hey, just want to reschedule. Hey, want to get it back on the calendar? Hey, it sounds the same. And so what I, we teach people to do is to strengthen the language towards cut the cord because we go in our four stages. We go, okay, first stall, second stall. We, these are all based off of nineties uh, songs, by the way, what's up four non blondes, right? So the second stall is like, well, Hey, what's up? It's, it's a tone, right? What's up? Yeah. Man? What's going on? Yeah. What, is something, uh, the next one, crisscross, so warm it up, Chris. I'm about to. So that means I'm about to pull the cord. It's kind of a warning shot. Like, Hey man, I'm about to pull the cord, you know, Correct me if something's wrong or whatever, but it just feels like we're kind of heading, heading that direction. Last one, close the file. I'm out. We're done. Close it out. We also tactically recommend that all of our clients, and I'd love for all of your clients to do this. I, I prescribe this in the last Thursday of every month because we're usually chasing a monthly goal in sales. That's a very common thing. And on the last Thursday before that, I want to do a funnel cleaning. I want to just move some stuff out to freshen it up. Okay, I do that on Thursday, so I still got Friday to do the closing of the stuff that can get done. But there's something cathartic about this that's refreshing. This load comes off. It's scary at first because I suffer from attachment. Right. Once I get past that, man, it's good. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think there's like uh, there's like an emotional aspect to this as well, where a rep is thinking about the time that they've already invested. And that, but at some point it's like, that's a sunk cost. Like that time is gone. You have like, a, there's like a, you know, you have, it's, there's like a limited amount of energy that's left as you are describing it. Take that and apply it towards something else that has a higher chance. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Sheena, there's so much emotional energy that causes mm -hmm. this problem. Everyone wants to tactic, tactic in it, tactic out of it. What do I say? What do I do? What do I say? What do I do? The root cause is in here. It's head, heart and soul stuff. It's the inability to let go of something or the inability to recognize that just because I worked really hard doesn't mean that I deserve to have it ha work, uh, um, uh, show up a certain way I, or an outcome a certain way. Um, I, I always teach people, I say, here's the test. Do it with your closet or your garage. Just play this game. <laughs> clean your closet out. You just move, Sheena, right? So you get this. Clean your closet, clean your garage, take a before and after picture, send it to me. And then I'll randomly pick you, send a, send a t text to you in, in December and say, take the picture again, send it. Let me see what it looks like now. Guarantee it's full. Guaranteed. Voids get full. Mm -hmm. Void get, yeah. Voids get or voids get filled, I should say. They just do. You know, you got to Marie and, Kondo um, your sales just, pipeline. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> you totally do. Yeah. You totally. That's even better. Thank you. So I give away, I give away money on my training sheet. I'll give you 20 bucks. Send me your video. That was beautiful. That was yes. Good. But that's the truth. The voids get filled. So we have to create our own voids. I call it closed loop prospecting. People work the same deals over and over. You got to break those out. You got to pull some out. Let them go. You know, take pressure off of them too. They feel it, even though they're not responding. They feel it. Yeah. yeah. I got one of those. I got a message this morning from a guy chasing him. Like, yeah. We got uh, similar advice from Marcus Chan, Sheena. If you remember, mm. he did the same thing. He was talking about how to get a. I think it was how to get a deal unstuck, and he was saying. 
what happens is, uh, or this might be my wording, but it's like, it feels like someone's just tapping you on the shoulder. So, you know, if someone yeah. comes up, you know, from the side or behind, like, you know, that nice double click, like, oh, what's up? Yeah. What's going on? Right. Yeah. But if you ignore that and you get the double, double click, you're kind of like, <laughs> eh, I'm kind of like not feeling this. And then the like repetitive, like, Hey, I need your attention. Then you turn around and you're like, what the do you need? Right? And you get super <laughs> right. upset. And it's the same thing with, with prospects. Like you're saying, if you just email, Hey, can we reschedule email? Hey, can we reschedule? Hey, we're doing this thing. It conditions your buyer that this is a low value communication outlet. And you're also limiting yourself to that one channel, or I think you call it yeah. modality. Modality. Yeah. So what are some tactics folks can use to expand on that? Right? Like, I don't know if yeah. text, obviously calling is, is not yes. new, but like, what do you, what do you coach Brian to get out of that single, single lane? Yes. Excellent question. The first bit of coaching. So the, the phrase I use and your listeners can, can hang on this phrase, change the channel, change the message. The channel's the modality that change the channel, change the message. So I want that to resonate in people's heads when I'm stuck. Okay. I got to change the channel, change the message. So let's go channel changes first. Um, any and all to me are available as long as your intentions are good and pure. So if my intentions are good and pure, if I'm selling for Gong and I believe Gong can help a CRO, you know, be a better coach and mentor and leader and everything else, then I'm going to call her as much as I can because I feel good about it. Um, and then I can, so if that's clean, I'm clean there, then any of the modalities work. And Devin, you mentioned a few. Text, absolutely. If someone gives you their cell phone number, to me, that's permission to text them. Some people disagree with that. I mean, if it's on their business card or if it's your mobile phone. Yeah. Now, some people are like, oh, that's kind of creepy or whatever. But, you know, we're in, we've talked already. And if they don't like me to text them, they say, please don't ever text me again. <laughs> no problem. I won't. Okay. Um, uh, any sort of um, uh, social media, you know, direct reach. Re so LinkedIn, if I can go direct there. Some of my clients, now this is a, you know, a debatable one. Some of my clients will go direct on other um, uh, social medias. So they might, uh, the person now from a business standpoint, the person has a business Facebook page or something like that, maybe try an angle there, but I'm always trying to move around if I can, um, phone call, voicemail, non-voicemail, all those sorts of things. Um, I'm just constantly fluid with the, with the channel. So for managers who are inspecting their team's pipeline, what questions should they be asking to figure out whether deals are in purgatory or not? That's brilliant. Um, my favorite thing here, and I love the word inspecting. This is a great word, isn't it? <laughs> because they should be doing. They should be inspecting, like looking over it. Um, so this is called, I call this the green check rule. This is the green check rule. And what that means is if I have an open opportunity and I'm calling on Devin and Sheena and we have uh, a next step that in my calendar on my phone, if I showed it to you right now, there would be a green check next to the invitation that I have. And we have a scheduled date on whatever date, you know, Tuesday, June 23rd, a zoom from noon to 1230 to talk about the alternatives document that I already sent you super clear green checked. So the first thing you can do is audit for, we call those clear future dates, CFDs for short, you audit for clear future dates. It's got to have a green check. Um, what can't happen. And this is what happens. Managers inspecting. She's looking over, you know, the pipeline says, uh, hey, Devin, how are we with the blind zebra thing? Oh, really good, Sheena. We're good. Yeah, we're supposed to talk uh, uh, early next week. You hear all that language, that qualifying language? We're supposed to talk early next week. What does that mean? We're, there's no clarity in that. So then I start to go, what is supposed to mean? Then I go, when is early next week, by the way? When does that start? Is that Sunday night? Is that Monday morning? Is it Wednesday at noon? See, there's no clarity. We have to have clarity and certainty mm -hmm. in, these, in, in our process to stay out of purgatory. So I would, and you're not trying to be a jerk. You're not trying to be like a micromanager. You're trying to help the team. And the way to help the team is to hold them accountable to the green check. That's when it counts, you know, and it's not perfect. Not everyone's, we, you know, me included. We, I, I sell, I, I sell first coach second and I have them right where you, something slips you, but you're constantly chasing the green check. That's what you're doing. It sounds like in that response, there's like some advice for reps too on be specific. First of all, know your book. You know, yes. be detail oriented and be specific in your answers. Don't be vague. Always. All these qualify and I'm from the Midwest, so we do lots of qualifying words. Hey, would it be okay if maybe possibly we could perhaps <laughs> mate might we do that all the time in the Midwest, I'm sure in other places they do too, but um I like to try to remove those what I call Midwestern qualifiers. 
Not, hey, maybe perhaps we can maybe possibly, I say, let's do this. Let's get our calendars out and set our next step while we're sitting here. This other little thing too, and I don't know, Sheena, what, if you're, can you give you your phone? Yes, I do. Nearby? Yeah. Sheena. Okay. So I don't like sales trickery, but I'm telling you, if, so we're on a, vis, a visual, like a Zoomish thing. If you want to set a clear future date with a prospect and stay out of purgatory, that's what we're talking about. You grab your phone and you wave it like I just did to the camera. And I say, Sheena, do you have your phone? Sheena, will, she just grabbed hers right and waved it back to me, didn't she, Devin? Right? Everybody does that. And so all we're doing in the spirit of clarity and efficiency is that I'm just going to look at my calendar and say, hey, you know, great chat today. I'll be able to send some stuff. Over. Can you grab your, take a look at your calendar if you could. I'm looking at mine. I look at mine and it's just non-optional. Yeah. We, this is That's what we so do. Good. And I say, okay, let's look at the date. So next Friday, you tell me, fine, we need 20 minutes probably, tops, maybe schedule 30. What next? You tell me next. And then she looks at hers. And then here's the thing. I actually type it while I'm talking to you. So I say, okay, hang on. I'm going to send it. We said Friday, Zoom, 830 Eastern. Okay, send it. I go, um, okay, just send it. Tell me when you get it. Mm. And I look right at the camera. And she'll look at her phone and go, got it. And I go, accept that. We're good to go. Then I hang up. Now I'm not in purgatory. Okay. To, to show you how powerful and how uh, effective this is, <laughs> even though you said Sheena's name, when, as soon as you held your phone up and was like, do you have Sheena, do you have your phone in front of you? My brain was like, where's my phone? I want to like, I, wanted, <laughs> I was like, I was motivated to find it and go, I, Brian, I have mine too, by the way. I do too. I have mine. Um, I I'll do the thing. So that's, that's impressive. I like that a lot. I'm telling you. And that's, and you got to get them mm -hmm. looking. It's great. Uh, it reminds me of something uh, I was talking to uh, Shep Maher. He's the head of sales at BetterWorks. He's been on the show yeah. a long time ago. He was doing a session with our SDR team and he had this great line. Uh, and he said that pipeline reviews should be a hopeless place. <laughs> now, what he means is like you should be certain in what you know and what's going to happen and what isn't, which is just adding on to what you said, Brian, which like I think when you say it should be hopeless, people are like, oh, that seems kind of negative, but not really when you're operating in a world of ambiguity and you want to be certain you don't want hope like you said i'm thinking uh -uh. you know i'm waiting for them to get back to me i hope yes. that i'll hear from them tomorrow like yes i mean we mm. all know hope's not a strategy but i absolutely love that that uh you know pipeline review should be a hopeless place love it i love it i'm stealing that one so brian you're on the revenue intelligence podcast as you know <laughs> we love uh facts opinions and measuring data as you know so i yes. have to ask is there a way that you measure ambiguity or a way that you, maybe you measure exiting ambiguity using some of the tactics that we talked about? Yes, that's a phenomenal question. Um, so the first thing, and again, whether um, a tool can do this, like can Gong do this or another tool, you can do it you know, by hand also. And we do this at Blind Zebra. So we measure um, the percentage of open opportunities with a green check clear future date. Our goal is a hundred percent, which I know, and I'm an NFL referee. I'm never going to work a perfect game, but I'm always chasing it. And I will my whole career. And I'll never work when I know that players and coaches are the same way in the national football league, same in selling here. Um, but we do measure, so we can show you a stat. We can show you a KPI that says of the open opportunities that we have open right now, we've 91% green check, clear future dates set 9% knows. Then um, we can um, approach the nine, uh, the nine that we don't have, or you know that nine percent rather, and um, take action on them to work to set those. We still may not get one hundred percent, but we'll get a little closer. Um, so that's the first thing I would have you do is to measure it, take any snapshot in time, and say what is my percentage of clear future dates set? What percentage of open opportunities do I have that have or don't have clear future dates? And use that as a KPI. That's one. Secondarily, now this gets into Sheena's question earlier about that. Um, what if you're in the stage and how long is too long, which I hate this now. And I'd love for Gong to, you know, research this and tell me so I can go teach it to all my clients because <laughs> you guys are awesome. Is um, it can I age? So the way I think about it, can I age my normal days to close from open to cl and when I say close, I'm, I'm always I'm a decider. So close to me means won or lost. It means opportunities open, opportunities closed, won or lost. What is my average days on that? And then I create a tolerance level around those average days. When I get outside of the tolerance, then it comes time to close it. So if my average days to close on two years worth of data is 60 days for easy math, I create a tolerance level that says, I give standard deviations away, say when I get to 75 days, um, then I think, okay, is it time to close because I don't have clear future dates set if I'm in a loop, that sort of thing. 
somewhere in there is the answer, Devin. No, that's, oh, that's great. That's you great. Know? I mean, it's always going to depend, right? When you ask that kind of yeah. question to any business, if you have a yes. transactional business, a long enterprise sales cycle, but the deviation of time spent in stage can apply to everybody. And anybody yes. can, uh, you know, have the, that check mark, whatever it is, whether it's the one you provided or a slightly, you know, a varied one for their business. So the pass, yep. if you're looking for a pass for me, you, you got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing people forget is, you know, no, never means forever. And so I can close, I can, you know, send you a, a note that says, Hey, Devin, you know, we tried each other four or five times and this, we haven't gotten each other. I'm going to go and close things out on my side. Wish you guys lots of luck. We'll stay in touch. You may call me the next morning. We can pick up where we left off or you may sure. never call me again and I can still prospect you down the road. I mean, there's, there's not like these tight rules like, well, you know, gongs opportunities close, never talk to Devin again. Don't ever call Sheena. Like, that's not how it is either. Everything's fluid. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to keep that in mind, too. And that's that detachment. Right. Which I think a lot yes. of times we apply yes. social norms, which is like, oh, well, if me and Sheena aren't friends anymore. Or I feel that we're not friends anymore. I'm not going to call her or text her. And we apply that to, well, Sheena had stopped responding to my sales you know, communication. So she must have written me off forever. Correct. I would never not, not respond true. to you, Devin. <laughs> See that? So kind. Now, now, <laughs> See how I can like throw in a little like compliment file, like a little validation. From you? Yeah, yeah. We keep that. We keep we keep we have a happy note file here at Blind and Zebra. We keep happy notes like that, and so we Love read it. them back. And we don't feel good about ourselves. I have one too. I have a Evernote called Niceties, and it's I yes. Screenshot compliments and nice things. I look at it once in a great while, but sometimes you just need to pick me up a little reminder. Oh, like what a good it idea. Is. It's not so that. bad. It's not. It's so a great bad. idea. I'm yeah, telling you. But great. yeah, obviously, you know. Not not a vanity uh, metric thing. No, like oh no. god, right? It's, yeah. When I'm like feeling really bad about my, I'm like okay, maybe I'm not such a bad. Guy. Don't go post all of that on LinkedIn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's different. Like here's, here's 90 things people have said about me. That's pretty great. But I didn't say it. <laughs> they said it. I'm just showing you on a public forum, <laughs> so you know. Um, fantastic. Right. Sheena, do you want to take us away to the last question? Let's do it. So Brian, we asked all of our guests one question, which is, how would okay. you describe sales in one word? For those who cannot see Brian, he has his eyes closed. He is in deep meditation or I am. he's thinking. I, am. I keep coming up with this word that is glorious. I don't know why. I've never thought of it, never described mm -hmm. anything like that. It's just such a cool process. It, there's so much to it. It's just glorious. It, there's so much to it. There's human interaction. There's business. There is math a little bit every once in a while. <laughs> There's problem solving. I mean, there's just such a glorious profession. It's fantastic. I love it. Profound. I love it. I love that. No one has said glorious yet. So no. <laughs> it just kept, you know, close my eyes. You know, things yeah. and I, it kept, I kept, I kept trying, kept fighting it away and it kept coming back. Like, right, here it comes out yeah, the yeah. mouth, out the <laughs> mouth we go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Brian, I had a fantastic time hanging out with you Same. today. Thanks for stopping Same. by the show. Uh, tons of takeaways, pages full of notes for listeners. So I want to say thank you and excited to see you hopefully before on TV, you know, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> but uh, either way, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Stay in touch. You guys are awesome. Keep doing, you're doing great work for our profession. I can't say thanks enough to you to Gong and all that you do. Um, thank you. And uh, just keep it up. And um, we love it. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you both. Woo! <laughs>